What's going on guys, Briar Rabbit here, playing a little Gold Rush on the Nemesis DLC, and one of the things I've always enjoyed about Call of Duty is that when they release a new map pack, they release a playlist to go along with it. So you can just play that map pack over and over again. You don't have to worry about waiting for the new maps to cycle through while you're playing all the old maps that you've been playing well all year. Uh, I've always liked that. However, they're limited playlists, right? With this Nemesis DLC, is all we've got is Hardcore, Objective, and t uh, Team Deathmatch, which includes Kill Confirmed as well. So if you followed this channel for a while, you've noticed that I play a lot of Free For All. Free For All is my favorite game type in Call of Duty, and there's a reason for that. I, I don't really play well with others, you know? I, was, I don't know if it's because of the way I was raised or just a personality trait of mine, uh, but I've always preferred to compete at things that are kind of individual experience, you know? I really liked wrestling, I didn't like baseball as much. It was that kind of a thing where when I wrestled, I would go out on the mat, I was alone, you know, I didn't have anybody to rely on for help, but I also didn't have anybody that would mess me up, you know? It's like if I won or lost, I had only myself to blame. And that's one of the things I like about competing. It's also one of the things I like about Call of Duty is when I jump into a free-for-all, if I win or if I lose, I got nobody else to blame but myself. Now this game is different. When I'm playing the Nemesis DLC, I have to play team or objective-based modes. And uh, this team ended up being terrible. <laughs> it was really, really bad. And I'm not gonna brag uh, because I certainly didn't do that well in this game either. I think I went like 23 and 13 or 23 and 15. You know, not a YouTube-worthy game by any means. But after I played it, it kind of got me thinking, like, you know, that's really why I can't stand playing team games, right? Because I had a team where nobody on my team went positive. No, not a single person other than me. So while I certainly didn't carry the team, I can't be blamed for the loss, but I also can't blame anybody in individually, right? I mean, it was a team effort to lose. It was an absolute team effort. I play on a softball team that's not very good as well, and I initially had a real problem with it, right? I'm a competitive guy. I like to win. It's just, it's a part of my DNA. Uh, so getting on this softball team, which was mostly a bunch of insurance workers who, uh, you know, they were friends. They wanted to do something during the weeknights, uh, and they decided to form a softball team. They never won. They never, ever won. And I remember when they first invited me, I said, no, I don't, I don't really want to play, you know, I like to win. <laughs> you know, I didn't want to be insulting, but, you know, that was the fact of the matter. However, a bunch of my friends ended up joining. Uh, they asked me to play, so I ended up playing. And what I found over the years is that it's less about the whether the team wins or loses. Uh, it's more about how I perform. Like, how did I do in that game? Uh, because I know that we're going to lose, right? It's a foregone conclusion. We have a bad softball team. But did I make some plays? Did I pitch well? Did I hit well? Uh, did I make good plays at first base? That kind of thing. You know, it's like, hey, you know, I, I judged the night on individual performance because if I judged it on team performance every time I went out and played, I'd never have any success. So it's all about managing my expectations when I'm playing. Uh, and the same kind of goes for playing team deathmatch or playing domination. You know, domination is a little harder because you really need a team to work cohesively to play but with team deathmatch you can really lone wolf a game you know if your teammates are at least playing you know around 50 50 they're getting as many kills as they are deaths then you know one person can carry an entire team or two people can carry an entire team but this gameplay just didn't go like that it just it was just it was brutal, you know. The other team was beaten up on my team so badly. There were care packages. There were, you know, score streaks up in the air. It was just brutal. It was a brutal experience, and it kind of got me thinking about, you know, how do I deal with teams? How did I become this, like, anti-team person, right? Uh, you know, I just prefer to lone wolf it. I love to lone wolf it in Call of Duty. Uh, you know, that's not to say that I don't like playing Call of Duty with friends, that's a good time, but it's usually not a competitive experience for me. It's usually a lot of joking around and screaming at each other and you know, that kind of thing. It's very much not about the competitive environment once I get into a Call of Duty lobby with friends. It's just, it, it takes some of the pressure off. So, I was thinking to myself, where did that come from? You know, I, I remember even as a kid, I spent a lot of time together. You know, I was, I was a single child. I was an only child. I was raised by a single mother who worked a lot. So if I wanted something to get done, 
you know, I had no choice but to do it myself. I didn't go asking other people to do it because there's nobody else around to do it. If something happened in the house that, you know, shouldn't have happened, there's nobody for me to blame. Uh, there's nobody that I could say, oh, he did it or she did it because I was the only one there. <laughs> like, if a vase got broken, it was quite obvious who broke that vase. So I never, I never had that experience of being able to just kind of shuffle off my mistakes or shuffle off my workload. And I think that changed me. Now, in adult life, that ended up being a real problem for me. You know, I, I was not good at working with a team. I was not good at managing other people. I got into a couple of positions work-wise where I actually had to manage people. And frankly, I had no idea how to do it. You know, I either A, expected you to just know how to do stuff and get it done. And, you know, if you didn't know, I could tell you how to do it. But I really expect you to work it out for yourself because you are a thinking human being. And, and that's just how things are done, right? Well, no, not really. People expect to be, you know, taught and to be, you know, uh, you know, shown over and over again. And, you know, I'm not saying that the people I was working with were idiots or that they were not or lazy or not good at their jobs. It's just that my style of management was not a good one. I was it was not an effective way to communicate with people because I had never learned that from anybody else. So it's kind of a funny thing how this one <laughs> Call of Duty game got me thinking about all these different aspects of how my life uh, has related to teamwork and my strengths and weaknesses with it. Now, now that I'm married, I really have to get better at teamwork. It's really something that I've been working on in a big way because as a team, we have to do very important things. We have to pay bills, we have to raise children, we have to manage a household. Uh, so it's a funny thing, and it's uh, it's funny how one Call of Duty game got me thinking about all this different stuff. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hit that like button if you did. If you're new to the channel, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!